We're Team App Closure. Hi, my name is Anmol Singh. Hi, my name is Jordan Robinson. Hi, my name is Audrey Schreiner. My name is Arjun Sri Manoj. After meeting with Dr. Gidry, a Tulane trauma surgeon, we decided to investigate improvements to delayed abdominal closure methods. The fascia tissue of the abdominal wall when patients who undergo trauma surgeries often loses its compliance following a midline incision. In addition to this, the abdominal organs swell, significantly increasing the volume of the abdominal cavity. Because of these factors, it is a difficult and time-consuming process to reconnect the sides of the abdominal wall. Possible complications of these surgeries include sepsis, organ failure, and in some cases, even death. This leads to the need for surgeons to have a way to prevent these complications during delayed abdominal closure after damage control surgeries. After researching delayed abdominal closure, we found four main technologies currently used to reconnect the abdominal wall. Abthera, a negative pressure device that promotes closure. Abra, which threads strings through the sides of the abdominal wall and are manually tightened. The Whitman patch, a Velcro strip attached to both sides of the abdomen and tightened every few days, and skin grafting, which promotes hernias that are repaired a year later with a mesh implant. Most of these methods cause necrotic fascia and requires the patient use an OR every time the device needs to be tightened. All of these methods are subjective and rely on the surgeon monitoring the feel of the abdomen by hand to determine whether devices can be tightened. We have identified five central design requirements that are key to our device's function. One, it must be easy to operate and remove. Two, it must be biocompatible. Three, it must secure the abdominal contents. The device should promote containment of the abdominal organs and remodeling of the fascia layer to recapitulate its mechanical properties. Four, it must prevent complications, resulting in the patient spending less time in the hospital and less time being required to provide treatment. And five, it must maintain a healthy intra-abdominal pressure. Constant monitoring of the patient's IAP is a very important consideration. Pulling the abdominal wall too hard can result in an increase in IAP, which can lead to compartment syndrome, a complication characterized by the occlusion of major blood vessels. Our first design iteration started with the mannequinism fabric. There were three layers, a resealable superficial skin layer to prevent infection, a tension or tension mechanism made of a boa shoelace to allow a ratcheting tightening system, and a deep fascia layer with a silicone and biocompatible sheet with hooks to catch on the tension or tension mechanism and allow adjustability. This deep fascia layer would be sutured into the fascia and would be able to be cut to size for the patient. Our previous design still required subjective intra-abdominal pressure, or IAP, monitoring, so our second design iteration focused in on the turning mechanism and deep fascia layer. This incorporated a layer of piezoelectric pressure transducers along the internal side of a mesh attached to both sides of the fascia to monitor the intra-abdominal pressure. This would then connect to an Arduino to activate the servo motor to tighten if the IAP drops below 10 millimeters of mercury, a healthy IAP, demonstrating internal swelling has decreased, or loosen if the IAP surpassed the standard 12 millimeters of mercury, indicating a grade one abdominal compartment syndrome. This eliminates the subjective monitoring by physicians. The motor would then attach to the hooks on either side of the fascia. This model relied on current healthcare techniques to maintain an outside sterility, but did not require OR time to tighten and monitor the device. The third and final design iteration focused in even further, replacing the piezoelectric sensors with the bladder pressure catheter, which are the current standard of care for monitoring IAP. This will monitor every four hours to inform tightening and loosening. The turning mechanism will be placed through the mesh fascia complex with sutures to strengthen and reconnect the fascia. In this image, the force sensing resistor demonstrates where the catheter would be attached. With the prototype at hand, we devised four testing protocols. First, intra-abdominal pressure. Can we accurately measure the IAP over the course of four months and detect small sensible changes in pressure? Two, mesh interaction with fascia. Can we withstand the physiological stress conditions found in the abdominal wall as well as the load of this device? Three, the tension retention mechanism. Can we apply enough torque and force to promote the closure of the abdominal wall? And four, battery life and battery power. Can we place the device and its power source in the body for at least four months without exposing any components of it? Preliminary results of the protocols indicated the batteries cannot provide enough power for four months. Uh, the pressure transducer and the motor draw too much current. Therefore, we're shifting gears and we're looking at alternatives. Seeing as we cannot maintain the device at low power consumption rate, we're going to test out whether we can connect to an external wall outlet or use replaceable batteries after each use. The SOLIDWORKS animation demonstrates the turning mechanism in the middle pulling on the sutures which are attached to the mesh block. 
Here you can see a multi-SIM design of our circuit and a video of how our tension retention mechanism works. So far, we have spent $891 on the development of the AB closure prototype. Most of this money has been spent on electronic parts like pressure sensors, motors, and batteries. We have also purchased relevant medical equipment and other products that make up our final design. Future development will be required to make our device viable in the medical context. To this end, we need to spend money on things like custom manufactured turning mechanisms and printed circuit boards. Our biggest feature expense will be on the telebio meshes, which have been quoted at $8,000 a piece. So for our market analysis, our customer base will be comprised of 6,210 hospitals in the United States, 5,600 medical device companies, again in the United States, and 34,390 surgeons in the United States, 2,250 of those surgeons being trauma surgeons. So for our timeline and future work, we have already completed our Empathize, Define, and Ideate stages. In our Empathize stage, we talk to trauma surgeons to try and understand the problem. In our Define stage, we um, analyze the functional requirements that would be needed to solve the problem, as well as the scope of the problem and the potential users of our device. Um, in our Ideate stage, we um, analyzed how we could solve the problem and we came up with a prototype idea using a lacing mechanism, a tension retention mechanism, automation of our device um, using code, and a mesh implant. Now we are working on our prototype from our idea, which includes contacting vendors um, for different materials, uh, scaling our device so that it'll fit well in the body, and integrating code uh, for our automation of our device. Um, in the future, we would like to test our device, which is, includes integrating the pressure transducer into our device, um, using an external wall outlet as a power source for testing, um, completing all the testing protocols using the mesh implant, um, and testing our tension or tension mechanism. After that, we would like to um, combine all of the components of our device in complete cadaveric testing using scrapas and campers fascia. We would like to acknowledge our faculty and industry mentors, as well as the teaching team, um, as well as our community service partner, um, the Tulane Biomedical Engineering Department, and our sponsors, which include the David A. Rice Design and Down Fund, the Tulane Biomedical Innovation for Global Impact, and the NIH grant. For information about our community service project with Legacy Donor Foundation, please take a look at our website. Thank you.